Welcome back guys with another video at Linksy. Today we're going to be doing a uh, discussion on sieges. I have been experimenting with my content recently and it seems to have picked up more than usual so we're chatting. I'm having a chat with you guys and sometimes I show you my face, sometimes I don't. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. So yeah, if you like, like the face cam on as I start the discussion and I turn it off as you see the gameplay, do let me know when I try to adjust it as necessary. I have also, as you can see, got some new swag. I have a microphone arm and I can adjust the direction the microphone is on the fly, which is very, very sweet for a content creator. I cannot believe I am so excited about this. That said, let's jump into the matter at hand, the sieges. Sieges are a big point of contention in Total War Warhammer, as a lot of people do not like them. And I can understand why. There is a difference in the sieges of Warhammer. They are single dimensional, as some would put it. I wouldn't say they are. They are still very multi-dimensional, as all battles in Warhammer are. The issue with sieges are they face one way, they are very limited, and they do not offer many different solutions to the puzzle that is ultimately a siege. You see, whenever we play these games, I tend to imagine them as being a puzzle, a puzzle that we have to solve at the fastest possible way. Some people like to roleplay while playing the puzzle, others like me try to find the optimal way and quickest way to solving the puzzle with, of course, the least amount of losses. What is this puzzle? This puzzle is simply us breaking the castle walls, getting inside the castle, killing the enemies, and of course, this is making it awkward to use hand signs, but hey, I'm Mediterranean, so I have to use my hands. And of course, capturing ultimately the castle and owning it at the end of the battle. Some things that you have to keep in mind in Total War Warhammer that castles are incredibly important on two, if not more, dimensions. The first of these two dimensions for me is castles are the cornerstone of AI control. Con controlling the AI on the campaign, you need to control them by capturing and holding on to the settlements and sieges are an integral part of this as walls stop the AI from capturing lost territory quickly and of course give you time to mount a very potential counterattack that will save you. The second such thing is that you can often beat an army two, three, four times the strength that of your own that is cornered inside the castle. This of course through the use of artillery and missiles since AI does not leave the castle walls. Now, this point of contention of a lot of debate is the point of contention of a lot of debates as <laughs> a lot of people find this unrealistic. In fact, I've noticed also that uh, Cre uh, Creative Assembly has, in fact, started programming the AI to leave the castle or do sorties, especially with flying units or simply sending some troops outside of the gates to deal with those pesky mages that Legend of Total War sends and as consequence a number of us do. So let's jump into the battle and we start having a discussion while we see the castle because I went on a ramble but I thought it was important to discuss the campaign aspect from a campaign perspective as of course Volkmar the granddaddy uh, is looking at the castle of the uh, Border Princess. For those who don't know this is from my Geld Coast Illustria campaign. I'm still playing it on the side. It's slowly expanding and I'm hopefully being able to capture the map sometime in the next few months. So, sieges. Sieges require often you to have a number of things. Primarily in my case I like to have four or five really good artillery pieces and then some shock units. In this case I have these steam tanks which are better shock units than you would think. Missile units, a mage, or three in this case, and a strong lord that is capable of tanking quite a lot of damage. There are multiple ways of dealing with it. This is, of course, an endgame stack. Usually I would not have hand gunners at all, or not even shock units, and these would all be low-tier missile units, such as in the case of the Empire, it would be crossbows. However, hand gunners tend to do really good in the late game they tend to shoot out the high value targets such as dragons monsters and beasts and lords of course and heroes really quickly whereas the hellstorm rocket factories deal with anything that comes at us early game you're going to be using mortars with the empire every faction have their own version 
of artillery, with the exception, I believe, of the Wood Elves and the Beastmen to a certain extent. The Beastmen still do have Sigors, which is the one and only artillery they got. You could say the Vampire Counts don't have, but they do have, um, I believe, uh, Vargulfs, which act as battering rams. And they have Vlad, of course. <laughs> he, he, he is a siege piece of siege equipment in his, his own right. So how do you set up? Well, I always like to set up by attacking from a corner and dealing in with the battle and attack. Now, this uh, causes people to complain to a number of reasons. The first and primary reason why they complain is, well, they tell you that's not how sieges are meant to be. You know, you're meant to have these amazing battles. You charge in, men dying on the fields of battle and uh, climbing the walls, getting over the walls, getting ready to fight and die for the glory of the Empire. Oh boy, that is not the case, no. Um... The reason why sieges have always been such a slow thing, and there are so very few sieges, and those that there are there in the real world, of course, are so famous, is because sieges are expensive, bloody things that require a lot of investment. Attacking the walls of a city is just absolute strategic nonsense. Frankly speaking, if you can surround the enemy, or in this case, overwhelm them with firepower while the defenders try to cower behind their walls, do so. In this case, this is exactly what we're going to be doing. So let's strap into it and get started in the fight. So, after we set up like this, and uh, I will be just fighting the battle normally, and we'll be talking about what people find annoying with this. Now, most people, what they find annoying is that... Mm, repeatability not repeatability the uh boring re repetition repetition that's the word i was looking for the boring repetition that the siege battles are which are essentially always starting the same neutralize the four towers neutralize the missiles usually by having a lord running back and forth in circles wasting their ammunition and then send in a mage or just bomb the living hell out of them with artillery in this case we have a lot of house from rocket batteries and Damn, they can do damage. We also, of course, have our uh, fire wizard, wizard, so I'm going to put some thick lines of fire over there and just start killing the troops. But there, this is, of course, not up everyone's cup of tea. Some people like to charge in and, of course, fight. This gives them issue with the towers, which are very, very strong, and they are very, very difficult to overwhelm. Fighting on the walls is not optimal in any Total War game. Fighting on the walls is considered to be a stupid man's move, uh, with respect, of course, to everyone. But uh, it's not something you do. As a general, it's considered to be quite um, dumb for someone to just fight on the walls for multiple reasons. Primarily, you cannot put formations on the walls. And that is an issue, a big issue, because formations are really important. Micro is more important than many people realize in the battlefield. And we'll have a discussion about micro eventually as well. We, we should have, if you've listened to the previous video to this, which was about corner camping, touched a little bit on micro and the importance of having more time to focus on your targets. However, with regards to sieges, if you're fighting on the walls, you cannot do any of these things. You just hope that you can finally break through by some form of miracle or other. In reality, what people need to be looking for in sieges is ways to maximize their strength, as always in any battle, by attacking at key target locations. In this case, I'm maximizing my strength by bombarding and weakening, softening my enemy before I charge in. I'm not gonna send in my troops when they are full strength, especially since their troops are pretty much on par with mine, and in many cases counter my units. They have a lot of great swords, which is armor piercing, halberdiers, which are armor piercing, and and of course they have the knights which would be able to wreck my handgunners if I do not have uh, superior positioning. In this case we do have superior positioning and we're simply using that uh, for our advantage. I am breaking down the walls, preparing space for my stink tanks to roll in under the supporting fire of the uh, handgunners. While I'm doing so I am using my Hellstorm rocket batteries and fire wizard to deal 
tremendous amount of damage make believe damage yes but damn look at this force this force is wrecked hundreds are dead already and the balance of power if it was showing would show on our favor that of course is not the case because we are playing on legendary and we don't get to see the balance of power in our favor whatsoever now many people at this point uh well, not many people have gotten to this point because not very few people actually siege in this manner and they try to either charge in or find awkward weird solutions to the problem. The thing is, once you find the best solution to the problem, which is the following that we've just described, at least that is what the community widely believes it to be, there isn't very much variety in the sieges, it's almost always the same, there are very few siege maps and that could be altered by CA adding a couple more sieges or of course adding the fable 360 sieges as they are called by part of the community. In my opinion that is not the issue, the issue lies at hand of the nature of sieging. The nature of sieging is that unless there are dynamic changing maps that are added or removed there's not going to be much difference. Eventually, people will find the optimal ways to siege, to uh, attack and defend settlements. This can be seen in Rome Total War 2, which is Siege Community Online is one of the biggest communities in multiplayer Total War. There is. The, each castle is defended and attacked in a very specific manner, and there are very specific solutions to everything. If you were to look at Age of the Empires and uh, StarCraft 2, why am I referring to these two games? Because they have metas, and the meta is very simply established by the community. Now, with the issue with Warhammer Total War, currently is the meta is very simple to arrive to. The conclusion that one must fight in a specific manner comes rather easy to many people. What is the solution? The solution for my end would be changing the maps making them larger would help, yes, larger maps tend to offer more solutions to the problem. Having maps similar to Troy, which uh, I would highly believe is a big step forward, uh, could help solve that problem, as it would add layers to the maps, like second, third layers, would really be useful in many scenarios, as it allows you to set up multiple lines of defense. But it also lies in the way units engage in Warhammer Total War. Units tend to engage quite heavily and battles tend to become quite difficult to disengage from. You tend to send in quite a lot of units to one area to hold and choke points are at the end of the game very important. A choke point can mean that you win or lose a battle as of course it helps you control the rate of the battle. So what the solution would be is not have two, in this case, three different ways into the town center, but rather having four or five. Each one means that if you try to defend it, you're going to get attacked from the others. In this case, as we kind of see over here, I'm going to pull this guy back so he doesn't die. If we were to attack from this left side, we're not going to really have that much success. I move there. The map on legendary is annoying we're not gonna have that much success in dealing with this scenario because even if we attack one unit can hold four or five of ours off unless of course we have monstrous infantry but even then it will be difficult to push through and might even cause people to be irritated in multiplayer hopefully that would not be the case because it is quite unfair to do so in normal games you would be offered a second way so you stretch the enemy's lines thinner and thinner to the point that you can finally find a chink in the arm and push uh push through to push your forces across in a manner that you finally break their lines and surround destroy units individually in our case here there are very few ways you can attack in multiple directions we've made a breach over here however we have only two options even if we wanted to go and come around this way to flank any units on this side they simply have to go back to this line and then we're the town center adding a depth to the ba ba battle map and largeness and size could in theory fix the issues at hand why are my artillery doing what they are doing 
With that said, I believe I've exhausted today's debates uh, as best as I could. I hope you found this useful. It, please do let me know your comments. I do like conversations and about this subject. Oftentimes they do not happen civilly enough and I do appreciate comments, even those dislikes and co angry comments I received a few days ago. I do appreciate them a lot because it is discussion and discussion brings forward change and change brings forward good things. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a lovely day. I wish you all the best. Check me out tomorrow if you want to see more content. If you do like the content, subscribe, leave a comment and please do like. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps the channel tremendously. Take care and goodbye.